Hi students, Professor Nugent here. In this video, we are going to discuss the measures of fit for multiple regression. In the last video, we discussed using ordinary least squares to estimate the coefficients for the multiple regression model. Now we're going to talk about the measures of fit for the multiple regression model, that is, how well does the model that we have estimated actually fit the data? The first thing we need to do is write down our nomenclature. Recall that the actual or observed value of the outcome variable, yi, is equal to the predicted value of y, which is yi hat, plus the residual, the OLS residual ui hat. The standard error of the regression for the multiple regression model is the standard deviation of the OLS residual and it has a degrees of freedom correction. While the root mean squared error can also be thought of as a standard deviation of the OLS residual, but does not have a degree of freedom of correction. When the sample size is very large, or the number of regressors small, or both of these things are... When we see both of these things at the same time, the standard error of the regression, the root mean squared error, are going to be approximately the same. R squared is the familiar fraction of variance of y explained by x. This will be the exact same formula as from the univariate case. We are introducing uh, a new measure of fit, which is adjusted R squared. R squared bar, we're calling that adjusted R squared. This is R squared with a degrees of freedom correction that adjusts for estimation uncertainty. What we mean by estimation uncertainty is how well the model fits the data as we add additional regressors. And adjusting for that means that adjusted R squared is going to be less than R squared. Let's first look at standard error and root mean squared error. As in regression with a single regressor, the standard error of the regression and the root mean squared error are measures of the spread of the outcome variable around the regression line. The standard error is the square root of 1 over n minus k minus 1 times the sum from i equals 1 to n of the square of the OLS residual. Now, n, this is the sample size. k, this is the number of regressors. So recall that in the univariate case, the standard error of the regression was 1 over n minus 2, right? Because we had one regressor. In the multiple regression case, we need to allow for many regressors. And so k equals the number of regressors. The root mean squared error it does not have this degree of freedom correction, so this is just the square root of 1 over n times the sum of squared residual. Let's look at r squared and adjusted r squared. The r squared is the fraction of the variance explained. This is the same definition as in regression with a single regressor. So r squared is either the ratio of explained sum of squares over total sum of squares, or 1 minus the sum of squared residuals 
divided by total sum of squares, where I explain sum of squares as the sum from i equals 1 to n of y i hat minus y bar squared sum of squared residuals is a sum from i equals 1 to n of u i hat squared and total sum of squared is total sum of squares is sum from i equals 1 to n of y i minus y bar squared. Now r squared always increases when you add another regressor, which is a bit of a problem for a measure of fit. Uh, it will always increase unless the coefficient on that regressor is zero. Um, in that case, if the coefficient on the regressor is zero, that tells us that that regressor is adding no information. But if the coefficient on that regressor is not zero, then we are adding additional explained variance to the model but it is a bit of a problem for a measure of fit because we could be actually making the accuracy of the model worse by adding more and more variables And we'll get to that collinearity, the imperfect multicollinearity case later. So our adjusted R squared, it corrects for this problem by penalizing you for including another regressor. So adjusted R squared, it does not necessarily increase when you add another regressor. So we have a degrees of freedom correction. Now, uh, adjusted R squared is calculated like so. It is 1 minus, and then we have this degrees of freedom correction here. The ratio of n minus 1 over n minus k minus 1, where n is the sample size, k is the number of regressors, times the ratio of the sum of squared residuals to total sum of squares. And n minus 1 over n minus k minus 1 this is always going to be greater than 1. Right? Because you're dividing the denominator will always be smaller than the numerator. So this ratio will always be greater than 1, which tells us that adjusted r squared is always going to be smaller than r squared. But if n is very large and k relatively small, the two are going to be quite close. Now let's look at an example. We are sticking with our test score example. These are hats. We all know that PowerPoint has got problems. In the univariate case, the predicted value of test score was equal to 698.9 minus 2.28 times the student to teacher ratio for the coefficient of determination. R squared was 0 0.05. The standard error of the residual was 18.6. In the multivariate case, the predicted value of the test score is 686 minus 1.1 times the student to teacher ratio minus 0 0.65 times the percent of English learners. The coefficient of determination R squared is equal to 0 0.426. The adjusted R squared is equal to 0.424, and the standard error of the residual is 14.5. Notice that standard error of the residual went down. That went down quite a bit. R squared went from 0.05 to 0.426. That went up quite a bit, right? This one went up. So we are explaining a lot more variation in y with these two variables. 
Also observe that r squared and adjusted r squared are quite close in equation 2. And that is because n is large. n is large. Also, k is relatively small. And so the ratio of n minus 1 over n minus k minus 1, this ratio is relatively close to 1 because n is so large. All right, folks, that wraps up our measures of fit for multiple regression. In the next video, we are going to discuss what assumptions we need in place for multiple regression.